current developments, presidential directives, accurate and reliable updates straight from the palace. This is Daphne Osenya Paez, your Malacanang insider. To deliver universal health care and assure every Filipino the right to good quality medical care is a topmost priority of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s administration. That is why the Department of Health is implementing innovative strategies for governance to meet the needs of our country. Dahil sa bagong Pilipinas, bawat buhay ay mahalaga. We have with us today Department of Health Secretary Ted Erbosa. Hello, Secretary Ted. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me and explaining the programs of the President in Health. Yes, uh, I had to have you here because I saw in your Facebook update something about leptospirosis because of the recent floods brought by Karina and Habagat. Yes, Karina and Habagat brought a state of calamity to the National Capital Region and several other regions and a lot of flood waters, heavy rains, and now, uh, a couple of weeks later, we are having a surge of leptospirosis cases in our hospitals. And the number one hospital that actually uh, sounded the alarm was the National Kidney and Transplant mm. Institute. They posted a photo of their surge ward, which is the gym, which is the gym of the hospital, wherein they had 48, actually about 30-something was in the, in the ward but uh, they had others in the hospital which was already full. And these were mostly people that waded in the floods during Karina and Habagat. And they're now suffering from the severe effects of the disease called leptospirosis. Okay. What, were, what were the symptoms and what were they being treated for in the kidney hospital? Okay, so what happens in leptospirosis is when you wade in flood waters and your skin has wounds or lesions, bacteria, the leptospira bacteria from the urine of the rats or the rodents can actually enter your bloodstream mm -hmm. and after a week or so anywhere anywhere from 5 to 30 days you start to develop very bad symptoms you have severe fever um, you you are prostate you're just lying down and then suddenly your liver and your kidney will fail you start to have jaundice you're yellow in the eyes and then they bring you to the hospital by this time because people think it's just the ordinary influenza mm -hmm. after a rain um, but when they get to the hospital, the hospitals will kind of see that they need dialysis. So the, the, knee, the knee jerk, yeah, they have anuria, what means they, they're not producing urine, their creatinines wow. are high. So they have a blood test that tells that the kidneys are in acute failure. So what they do is they send them to the NKTI. And this is the mm. reason why the first trigger of this uh, Facebook post was really the trigger and the, the request of the executive director of NKTI for additional health personnel. So, okay. so this is what happened, and then from there we activated our Health Emergency Management Bureau, and then we started to monitor the other hospitals. And true enough, the other hospitals were also having a few cases of mm -hmm. leptospirosis. So we got the bigger picture, then we started to do the, the, the allocation or patient navigation. So we posted the number, uh, my spokesperson posted the number where people can call so that they wouldn't all go or funnel to the NKTI. Mm. Because the other hospital, the other big hospitals can also can do handle the, it. Naman. Can handle the dialysis. So now we're allocating it. The other one that has a lot of dialysis unit is, uh, for your information, is the uh, Jose N. Rodriguez Hospital in Tala. Mm -hmm. We use that as our COVID facility. Uh -huh. That's why we have plenty of dialysis machines. Remember, part of the problem was uh, hemoperfusion yeah. and all this need during COVID. So we have built the capacity of that. So some of the overflow, we're bringing it there. Uh, I also, of course, asked my own hospital, Philippine General Hospital. They were also uh, experiencing a lot, a surge. We call mm. it a surge of cases. And uh, so these things are the ones, the, the difficult thing about... Uh, Leptospirosis outbreak is they are they need critical care, so that's a high level of personnel to take care of you. Uh, dialysis or hemoper dialysis that, to take care of the renal effects, and then of course antibiotics. So it, it's uh, labor intensive. You need Sec. nurses, critical care, and everything. Within days, you're gonna need dialysis. Correct. Days Within of exposure. So kunyari oh, may flood tapos nag wading wading nag swimming swimming ang mga yes. tao. Ang incubation period ng uh, leptospirosis can be anywhere from 5 days to 30 days. So even mm -hmm. a month after the flooding, you can still have the lepto. And it's not only swimming in the flood waters. Okay. We've had cases of people na 
naglinis lang ng bahay nila. After the floods, the water subsides. So mud is left. Mm. The mud itself in their feet or in their wounds also mm -hmm. is uh, infected with the uh, rodents, uh, okay. urine from the rats. So ano ang suggestion nyo? Paano ma-avoid mm -hmm. ang leptospirosis? Uh, well, number one, wag mag-swimming or mag wade sa flood waters. Mm -hmm. Number one yan. And if in other countries, I hear that their public, their, uh, public health departments warn people when there's a flood, that sewage water, sewage mm. yan, galing sa kanal. madumian, oh. galing sa kanal. So we shouldn't swim. Now, number two, if you are forced to wade in flood waters, na stranded ka, mm -hmm. you, soap actually kills the so, soap. Ordinary pag soap. By oh. accident na exposed ka sa flood waters, mm -hmm. pwede kang mag soap and water. Mag soap and water, and uh, if you have no wound, soap and water should mm. be fine. And then drying up, drying up immediately after exposure. Yeah. But if you have wounds, it will be a decision of the doctor to give you antibiotics. So we mm. give doxycycline or penicillin to actually give as a prophylactic for exposure, mm -hmm. especially if you're high risk. So mayroong treatment, ano, may prophylaxis. Meron din, ano, meron din paraan na we wear boots and rubber. So for the for the rescue people, mm -hmm. remember the rescue people right. during during the 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 floods, Habagat and Karina, we gave them actually, because they're going to work in the flood water, so we gave them prophylaxis anyway. Oh. So the the workers we already give them, but the ordinary people that get trapped in the floods, they're the ones that are, have to be divided into three kinds: low risk, medium risk, and high risk, mm -hmm. and they're the ones we give antibiotics to. Secretary Ted, nakakamatay ba ang leptospirosis? Yes, I think we've had uh, reported of at least four deaths already huh? in the past uh, few days alone. Why? In NKTI alone, I don't know the other hospitals mm. because the other hospitals are also reporting deaths because you go into what we call septicemia, sepsis, mm. and then into critical condition, and then they eventually go into shock and death. If the treatments are not done immediately, that, that's why their whole blood is poisoned from the toxin of the bacteria. And that's where the dialysis actually wow. works, to cleanse out all these toxins out. And if that's not done, they eventually die. So very important, if you do get the symptoms, eventually you get to a place that can treat you. Mm -hmm. Because some of those that die uh, eventually have gotten to the hospital late Too in the late. stage. Like any illness, pag huli ka na nadala sa hospital, even if it's the best hospital, even if we have the dialysis, mm -hmm. but if you got you at the point na it's hard to reverse the condition, they eventually die also. So today, very important, we sent out warnings to the public. Ano ang symptoms ng, ng uh, leptospirosis? At kung kayo ay nag, nag lumusong sa baha and you, you start to develop these symptoms, magpakonsulta ka agad sa doctor. We even gave uh, published our phone numbers on the... Uh, website so that you can call and there will be someone in what we call patient navigation that can answer your queries if you need to go immediately or you can wait or you go and where to go nearer to your mm -hmm. house. So we don't go all to NKTI. Mm -hmm. so Ang mga bata ba are susceptible? Yan? Yes, children are also susceptible to getting ah. uh, leptospirosis. Okay, so it's the rainy season now. Mm -hmm. There are other uh, usual common uh, illnesses associated with rain. Yeah, we what monitor wild. The, the mnemonics is wild. W-I-L-D. Okay. That's a waterborne illnesses. That's diarrhea mm -hmm. and, and all, anything you do when your hands are dirty or you get food. that then, And then uh, contaminated water. So people get acute gastrointestinal mm -hmm. illnesses. The second is influenza-like illnesses. Ito mm -hmm. yung trangkaso, the ordinary trangkaso. Because that's a respiratory virus. During the rainy season, people are in enclosed areas. Uh, hindi sarado yung bintana, mm -hmm. like COVID, you yeah. know, the poor ventilation. You're uh, in a group, of, a room of people, and then one is coughing. Hawa-hawa hawa 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 na yan. So we watch influenza. It's our influenza season. In the Northern Hemisphere, the influenza season is winter. Mm -hmm. In the Philippines, it's in the rainy season rainy that season. We, we push that. That's why we get people to get the vaccination before the rainy season, especially our elderly. They said the elderly are the ones at risk for influenza because they can get pneumonia. Mm -hmm. The third is leptospirosis, the L, W, mm -hmm. uh, waterborne, uh, I is influenza-like, L is leptospirosis. Mm -hmm. And the last one is our annual season, D for dengue. Yeah, dengue. dreadful we, dengue. Dread, well, it, dengue actually is self-limiting or you means you recover from it, but it's gotten kind of a 
bad light because so many people get infected mm -hmm. with dengue. Uh, we've, done, we've done very well with dengue. We treat it very well. The mortality or people that die from dengue are not as many. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can still get serious dengue. Do we, are, do we have an outbreak? Or no, not yet. Not but uh, mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're having the numbers. Actually, we, we have about 100 a hundred thousand a year, uh, over a hundred thousand a year, and we're about uh, g getting to that number. But that will increase as the burr months come. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know there are times our hospitals get filled up with dengue cases. Mm -hmm. uh, the key also is the the nice thing now is we're able to diagnose dengue quicker. Mm -hmm. We have the NS1; it's a rapid test, just like the oh, COVID okay. test. So we're able to tell if the their child has dengue mm -hmm. or not. Is it by blood or nose? By blood, by oh, blood. Okay, by okay. Blood. Um, going back to the illnesses associated with calamities and disaster, um, other than warning people and the awareness programs, are there other programs that we could do to prevent this from happening? Maybe Correct. coordinate with the LGUs or schools or. Correct. Well, number one, the schools. Definitely, I'll, I'll be going to Secretary Angara and start to talk to him about a convergence of health education or health literacy. It's very important to educate kids not to swim in mm. flood waters. I think that should be in the curriculum <laughs> of our <laughs> elementary. Mm -mm. Bring, or, or maybe our public officials should build public swimming pools, you know, <laughs> where water is chlorinated so mm -hmm. they don't wait for the flood season before they go swimming. So th that's something we can actually inculcate in the minds of our kids. I keep saying swimming in flood waters is like swimming in the Pozo Negro in the <laughs> sewer. <laughs> <laughs> because it's dirty water. All flood waters are dirty. And yeah. you get many diseases, not only lepto, mm -hmm. skin diseases and other diseases from your eyes, from your, what, when you swallow the mm. water there, that's very dirty. So very important, uh, education. We need to actually help our kids understand that swimming in flood waters are dirty. Number two, maybe we need some enforcement. Maybe local mm -hmm. officials should start enforcing, making people stay at home. Mm -hmm. during floods. I see them there on television. You see, mm -hmm. in fact, this season, I actually called uh, Teleradio because they were showing live kids swimming with salvabida uh -huh. and all, you know, they're making tumbling in the water, in flood waters. Oh, so I had to make an announcement that this is not safe. There, people can get leptospirosis. Oh. So I was the one who called me, oh. <laughs> so it's a proactive move. Uh, they were surprised. What did I want to announce? I just yeah. wanted to announce, you're showing people live uh -oh. on the floodwaters and kids were swimming. I said, mm -hmm. kids should know. So officials can do enforcement. Another one is really control of the rodent population. Like okay. any illness, like dengue, our program is to decrease the vector. The vector is the mosquito. mosquito. So you remove the breeding places. You cover water, where the, the places where uh, mosquito can be. That's the same with uh, rodents. How do you decrease rodents? Solid waste management. So mm. it's really pushing for very good solid wa management, especially before the rainy season and the floods. Mm -hmm. You see piles of garbage in every corner in most of the communities. And then when the flood waters come, all this garbage disappears. Yeah, They're in the flood waters. Yeah. And they all had rats that actually ah. populate and eat them. So when there are, when solid waste management is poor, the rodent population numbers increase. When the rodent population numbers increase, leptospirosis cases will increase. So if we control the rodents, we should be able to control this as a public health endeavor. So maybe I'll, I'll one of the things I'll plan to do is actually to go to the MMDA, Metro Manila mm -hmm. Council, and really talk to them about this problem of lepto because we cannot be keeping doing the same thing and warning and not do something significant. The mataas talaga yung lepto. In fact, the rest of the world looks at us as a lepto huh? Yes, Mumbai and Manila are oh. the ones that have recorded world record numbers. Really? The highest is Mumbai after a flood, but you know what happens in Mumbai. The temples have rats. They don't kill the rats. Uh, but Manila, we can solve it because yeah. we can do rodent control. We should be able to control this. We are flooded. We are a city below sea level, so it's always flooded. But if we keep our solid waste management and rodent population low, I shouldn't be having this upsurge of uh, mm -hmm. leptospirosis cases a week after right. or two weeks after. My floods. goodness. Well, you mentioned the, uh, the international um, uh, reputation, and you just came back from the ASEAN Health Ministers uh, yes. Forum. How was that? And this is my first uh, 
health ministers meeting. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's very nice that I meet all 10 of the uh, health ministers of the different countries. Mm -hmm. We have many common things that we aspire for. Universal health coverage, uh, uh, antimicrobial illness, uh, antimicrobial resistance from bacteria, uh, no malnutrition, mm -hmm. immunization. These are things we discuss there. And we share our uh, good practices. So it's very nice to listen to what the other practices mm -hmm. are. And it's also nice to learn that we have many things to offer to our ASEAN neighbors. Like what? In terms of health. I just discovered that the Minister of Health of uh, Lao PDR, where it was held in Lao, learned his English in the Philippines. <laughs> he learned it in Manila. said, you speak very good English. How do you know? Oh, I was in a program of the World Health Organization oh. to teach English to Vietnamese, Cambodian, Lao, Korea. And they were 10 months here in the Philippines, taught by Ateneo University. Mm, nice. Where else can you <laughs> learn good English in Manila? Arneo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he actually... I, I was wondering why he spoke very good English. So okay. that's it. then it came to my idea, why don't we have a bilateral? Then let's mm -hmm. talk about how we can build your health system better by teaching more of your health workers English. Because if they learn English, the internet is the source of health mm -hmm. information and many uh, courses online can be taken. So I think we have something to teach ASEAN by teaching the English as mm -hmm. a language, especially Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, all these countries. Wow, so uh, a shared um, uh, English uh, <laughs> Rather than pirate program. our nurses. <laughs> that, right. that's, my, uh, that's my option because we can train your nurses yeah. rather than pirate our health nurses. Well, that's good. We have a lot of teachers in Laos. That's mm -hmm. what I discovered. The, of the thousands that are there, 30% of the Filipinos there are teachers. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? So we have something to share to our ASEAN brothers. Actually. Interesting. Okay, we still have a lot to talk about, mm -hmm. SecTed. Oh, I'm going to take a quick break. Up next, a discussion on access to healthcare services for all. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Malacanang Insider with Secretary Ted Arbosa of the Department of Health. Secretary Ted, let's go back to the mandate of the Department of Health and the programs that you're doing. Um, how is the DOH ensuring that our Kababayans in the rural areas have access to health care services? This is in keeping with the Universal Health Care uh, Correct. Act. Correct. In 2019, we actually passed the Universal Health Care Act. Well, prior to that, we passed several laws that actually brought us to this and I'll, I'll name some one is the devolution of health care which is the local government code which allowed local officials to also run health systems the second was the uh, phil health law uh, the create the national health insurance act which created a single insurance for all filipinos although uh, for a long time we had problems covering it the third act that actually helped develop this was actually the sin tax law, mm. the excise tax on tobacco and alcohol, and this increased our budget. And there's a fourth one, which is actually the, uh, the universal health care law, which was passed in 2019. But unfortunately, because of COVID in 2020, we never got to implement it. It's only now in 2023, when we lifted the health emergency, that I'm tasked to actually make sure make that the happen. universal health care law is implemented. So we're yeah. struggling with implementing it after experiencing all the gaps. And remember, the law was created before COVID. So it didn't predict many of the things that COVID mm -hmm. exposed about the weaknesses of the health system. So it's all about having a strong health system for the Filipino people. And uh, the next one that really that strengthened it is the train law. Mm. The train law was passed already in the uh, administration of the president because I saw that the, both the syntax law and the train law added um, tremendous amounts of budget to the health system, which is good. We can implement universal health care law. My problem now is absorptive capacity. Mm. How do I use all these funds to make sure that health care is delivered to the people? So the first strategy here really is going to the most remote areas, the geographically isolated and mm -hmm. disadvantaged areas. 
what happened uh, Daphne to our health system was it was fragmented at two points first at the uh, governor when we had the devolution the governors would run the hospitals mm -hmm. and the municipal mayors would run primary care or the health centers and the DOH stopped at the region and then we invested in the regional hospitals we made the regional mm -hmm. hospitals but now when we talk about universal health care we talk about primary care when a, when a Filipino gets sick they must go somewhere they cannot go 100 kilometers away to the regional hospital so my idea here was to build uh, urgent care facilities in uh, communities themselves so this was announced by the president mm -hmm. luckily this was happily uh, accepted by the communities we built what were called urgent care, bagong urgent care and ambulatory service centers, which is an extension of the hospitals in the community. So they coordinated with the barangay health workers that brought women that needed cancer screening, with women with mm -hmm. people with diabetes, hypertension. So we, we brought the family and community medicine department into the community instead of waiting in the hospital for the people to come. Mm -hmm. And it was a big uh, success rate? it was a blockbuster because because what i realized was our poor still spend money to go yeah. 100 kilometers yeah. away to the hospital but if it's in their community it's either walking distance mm -hmm. or a tricycle ride or a jeepney ride away mm -hmm. so it became accessible and it's the same brand as the doh hospital mm -hmm. so immediately after we launched the first one in march 6 we now have 28 Mm -hmm. all over the country and <laughs> that was my initial goal I only wanted to build 28 Bukas centers for the 28 million poorest of course it's not enough but I wanted mm -hmm. to start but because it was such a success it even got to the sauna of the president right. and he mentioned it and I was so happy that he mentioned it now the co I came from Congress and they want to fund our Bukas centers for every for every well as long as they're needed so we're starting out in areas that are third class, fourth mm. class, fifth class municipalities, those that are really poor. So mm -hmm. providing, making sure that healthcare is also there through our big hospitals. But we partner with the mm. local because in some areas, it's a partnership between the mayor or the governor to use mm -hmm. a facility that has been built, but they cannot run it. I was going to ask it. that. So yeah. you don't have to actually build the Bukas. It's already, you're using old buildings? Yes. Uh, yeah. For example, the one in Santo Tomas was donated to us yeah. because the... Santo Tomas mayor said, we can't run this. We don't mm -hmm. have the budget mm -hmm. to run a hospital. Then we said, okay, we will run it. So we run the Buka Center like a hospital without the beds. So it has most of the services, but it runs from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So at least you can sleep from 11 p.m. to 6 mm -hmm. a.m. Let's go to the morning. Right. So why it became a hit is that before, if you're working, if you're a working person, by the time you end work and you want to bring your child to the hospital, the yeah. outpatient is closed. Outpatient service is closed. Right. But the Bukas is open until 10 p.m. So you get home at 5 p.m., you see your oh. child is sick, you bring them to the Bukas center. Oh. Bagay sa pangalan niya, Bukas. Bukas siya, oh. Oh. And then in the morning, uh, 6 a.m., before you go to your 9 o'clock job, yeah. you can send your child or your mother there, and right. we're able to process them in an hour. Not like in a big hospital. Mm. It's so complicated. The patient gets mm -hmm. lost. You don't know what's directing them where to go. Mm -hmm. You know, e even me, as I enter the hospital, I get stressed already. Right. <laughs> but patients work in uh, Bukas. Uh, I, I like the director of our JB Lingad. She said everyone is smiling That's in the good. Bukas. So it's more accommodating. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the cases you see are not, not hospitalizable. Yeah. Not, no, no beds. So it's like outpatient treatment. Right. So they're able to process one person in an hour, mm. in less than two hours. And it decongests the bigger and hospitals. It really decongested the bigger right. hospitals. The long queues in yeah. our emergency department and outpatient department really decreased. Right. So each of the hospital directors were building one after the other. And then the congressman and the mayor started giving me land. And there's one that even built it in two months. He built one in Tubao, La Union. Mm -hmm. The congressman donated the land and then provided money. Of course, I provided the money to buy the equipment. But now it's running. That's great. So what about our regional health uh, facilities, health centers, so specialty ones? So the, uh, the, the, the next one that we patterned mm -hmm. after the Bukas was a project of the First Lady and the President, which is the mobile primary right. cl clinic. Because we can't build in every faraway mm -hmm. place, but we can go there using the mobile primary care clinic. And the mobile clinic has all the things that we have in the Bukas. It has hematology, chemistry, x-ray, ultrasound, 
and its own generator set. And it was we put it in a smaller coaster, mm -hmm. so it's not a big, huge bus, so it can oh, enter the smaller smaller. roads. Okay. And it was really designed and thought of to bring to the most remote areas. And I saw this going with the First Lady and all this and mm -hmm. her projects, the Lab for All. Right. That so many people lining up to have laboratory mm -hmm. tests. So that's the idea. I, I said the way to institutionalize this is build this laboratory and bring them to the community. So who, who operates it? Who funds the operation? So we gave the buses to the governor. So we bought 83 and we gave them to all the governors. It's been distributed to, to Luzon and Visayas, the one, the videos. But we're, we're distributing next to Mindanao. So by that time, we would have uh, completed all 83. The governors uh, received the, the facility, but our hospital will, will partner with them. They, we ask them to have a schedule to go mm -hmm. around the province so that it can go to the most remote areas. So that's the order of the president, make the people feel healthcare. Mm -hmm. So bring we bring the them. mobile clinics. And then after that, I said, well, I'm not yet satisfied with just the mobile clinic. I want, I want the DOH to go by Purok. Mm -hmm. So we have this last project, we call it Purok Kalusugan. Mm -hmm. And we launched the first one in Region 3 in central Luzon. So it's a whole continuum of care. Very integrated. Well, basically, right. like, like in Canada. <laughs> so, so, that's, so I'm copying countries that have developed right. uh, from cradle to grave healthcare systems. That's basically what UHC is. Mm. Uh, the, the UK National Health mm -hmm. Service, the, the Canadian Health mm -hmm. System, uh, Taiwan, mm -hmm. Korea, Japan, all of these countries mm -hmm. have developed uh, healthcare systems for their citizens. That means the government takes care of you from cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. So the services will be available. So that's what I'm trying to do in the few thousand days that I'm left as Secretary Aww. of Health. All the activities that you're doing, going house to house, and generating a lot of data and information on patients that would normally not even go to hospitals, but you're going to their houses. What do you do with all that information? So this is the other platform we're trying to use. We're trying to use digital health technology to improve efficiency of the healthcare system. So with the Puro Kalusugan, where we go to each house, find out the problems in a family, we can report that. The, the health worker can be holding a smartphone or a, a, a tablet, and this can all be submitted to a, to a central command center. So we're building a command center for public health where I will know where all the malnourished kids mm -hmm. are, where all the zero-dose children are, where all the childhood pregnancies are, where all the people with TB are, so we can map them, so we can actually have focused, efficient uh, address, uh, efficiently address the health problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm using digital technology to, to make sure we, we don't waste any centavo. Right. So we, we get, are able to treat them. And then also, I'm hoping that with the eGov platform, people have an easier way to access healthcare. Yes. That means if they, have, they were tested positive for TB, where do I get my TB drugs? Mm -hmm. If I were tested for HIV, how do I get uh, antiretrovirals? Okay. So I'm, I'm using all these uh, other projects of government to be able to, f to fix uh, access. So that's access. And the second is making sure their health is maintained. So if you remember a few weeks back, a month back, I, I was being interviewed in a radio station. I said I wanted to change the name of the department to yeah. Department of Health and Wellness. <laughs> because now the trend is not just taking care of illness, but making sure people live long, well lives. Mm -hmm. So the idea is nutrition, good nutrition, health, uh, health promotion, disease prevention, immunization, and then sports. Sports, exercise, exercise making people active with movement, and that leads to longevity. Yeah. In fact, I was talking with the health minister of Singapore. Yeah, we may have the longest uh, life expectancy, but that's not really true. They're actually in a hospital bed attached mm. to a ventilator. That's not the longevity they want. Okay. You want you good want, quality of life. You want longevity, yeah. uh, people in their senior years, but they are productive, right. creative, they and dance, engaged with engage each other, engage with the community. Yeah, community. So that's that's our goal. And some, I noticed some countries have changed their mm -hmm. nomenclature to health, wellness, and longevity. Those are the common. Before it was health, welfare, mm -hmm. and aging. Now. But now, okay. but but I think this is really where we want to go. The best index of healthcare systems that work is that the life expectancy of your people mm -hmm. is long. Mm -hmm. We're at 71. We're way off the first world countries with 85, right. 80 plus. So 
I'm hoping we will be able to live long. I'm hoping to live longer. Uh, I'm already out, out aged my father who died of lung cancer. Mm. I stopped smoking. Okay. So because I said, oh, my dad died of lung cancer. I should stop smoking. I was a smoker. Mm. So I reached 66. He died at 60 mm -hmm. from lung cancer. So there is a way to actually increase longevity. Secretary Ted, in, uh, obviously one of your main mandates here is to really deliver the universal he uh, health care. But um, when you talk to the president, what are his other directives and his main interest, like in terms of health? Okay. Because this is very close to his heart. I mean. Yes. So initially, when I came in, the the focus was really the flagship programs. Of course, we will continue that. He was uh, talking about legacy projects of bringing heart center, lung center, mm -hmm. kidney center, the the projects of his father, to all over the Philippines. So right. we've continued that, and we we did groundbreaking in Clark. We did groundbreaking for a cancer center in beside Lung Center, and we're doing it in many places. In fact, uh, in all the DOH hospitals, we built up heart centers and cancer centers and children's centers. The next step I explained to him was this primary care, mm -hmm. these things I was doing. And when he was listening to my presentation in the cabinet, he immediately got it because he was a former governor. Right. He, he was a former governor of Ilocos, and he knew what I was talking about. So he, he completely agreed, and then he actually also included it in his sauna, the super mm -hmm. health centers, making sure that people have access to healthcare. So I think we're mind-linked now mm -hmm. in terms of what we want to do. The key is uh, it's a big problem. Our We're an archipelago. There are some places where getting healthcare means crossing an island mm -hmm. or uh, riding a boat to the next next island. And we need to fix that. I think some of the money should really go to just creating roads. For example, I remember there was a governor who talked to me. We were building him primary care facilities. He said, no, don't build me a primary care facility. I already built a hospital in the province, mm -hmm. and we, the DPW has built a road. Mm -hmm. So it now takes a tricycle 20 minutes to get to the hospital. So why, do we, why will you build me a primary care mm. facility? He was correct. Okay. So in, in essence, sometimes the infrastructure, uh, the farm to market road, is also the same road that the pregnant mother who mm -hmm. has a complication uses to get to the hospital. Right. In other places, it would be a muddy road and mm -hmm. no, no vehicle would go at night. And that's the time they're having complications. So, so the infrastructure, the, the access are actually parts of making sure. Telemedicine is another one that I think uh, we're in mind link. I talked to him about making sure that we have access to the doctors that are in the specialty hospitals mm -hmm. so that in the bukas, what we plan to do is also have clinics where you can just go on a camera and still talk to a mm -hmm. specialist because it will take time for these people in the community to schedule with the big hospital. But if I say once a week, can the specialist see the patients in the bukas? So the, an endocrinologist will see a diabetes patient that's hard to manage. A cardiologist can see a hypertensive patient that has some difficulty. Mm -hmm. So you have access to all of this. So it's really a systems approach. Right. Ba basically a systems approach and access. Of course, not everything will be ideal as I describe it, but at least it will be better from where it was right. prior and, to. Right, um, and already you've done a lot in uh, a year. Yes, a little over a, little a year. Over a, year. a little over a so, year. So, yeah, there's still a lot to talk about, a lot to uh, look forward to. And um, I hope that you can come back in this uh, Malacanang Insider and sure. we can keep talking. Sure, anytime. <laughs> I think health is really, uh, it's the third highest budget in yes. the executive. I'm expected to do a lot. So I want to tell the people what we're doing with right. the money that Congress and Senate is giving us and okay. what the president's idea really of making sure that every Filipino feels health care. Sabi nga nila, Bawat buhay mahalaga. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Secretary Ted Arbosa. Accessible and quality health services for all Filipinos. As the nation's leader in health, hangarin ng Department of Health ang maipaabot sa bawat Pilipino ang mas pinalawak na serbisyong medikal sa buong bansa. We bring you the in-depth views of the latest issues and breaking news as it happens. Stay tuned for regular updates at the Palace. I'm Daphne Osenia Paez. Have a good day.